seven minutes ago, but pretend like you never saw me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, give it up, by the way, uh, for your uh, bartender, Austin, everybody. That guy, there's a lot of us here tonight. Fucking take care of him, man. Take care of him. Uh, by the way, I want to plug the drink specials we have tonight. We have 775 pitchers of the cream ale. We also have uh, we also have 350 shooter specials. Ask Austin, your bartender, for more details. And another thing, when we have comics coming on, keep your table talk to like zero because because basically we have a back room. You can talk, converse with your friends. Because basically we're all trying to like work on stuff. We're trying to like you know create a moment. Basically, this is all we have. So, <laughs> so like, it's sad as stand up comedy is to some people, like, we, we need this. So, guys, we, we greatly appreciate it if you guys are just an awesome audience. And with that being said, uh, oh, before I bring on your host, uh, that green bucket on the second pillar back there, fill those out with your name and email address, because uh, we're going to be giving away free tickets to the Funny Bone. The reason I say your email address is because we're trying to get an email list going for the show, so, you know, let you guys know what, you know, what's going on, because we get special guests sometimes. It's a really good thing you want to be up to date on. Uh, so please do that. It's worth it. Come on, it's free tickets to the Funny Bone. Who doesn't yeah, want right. that, right? Anyway, with all of that being said, are you ready to meet your host and MC for the evening? This woman is one of my favorite comedians out there. She's a winner of the Clash of the Comics at the Richmond Funny Bone. Please give it up for the very funny Mikkel Katner! Got a lot of comics tonight, so he's gonna bring up the next guy. Very funny guy, kinda heavy. Please keep it going for Mr. Scott Horner! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I have to say, good God, we have an amazing looking crowd tonight, isn't that right, sir? Now, um, before I get too far, I just want to say something. Um, I've been living abroad for two years now. Um, I've been living in Scotland, and coming back to some place like this makes me feel right at home here at McCormick's, because never have I ever before been in bars in the United States that you have to be drunk enough to get into. Um, when I was over in Scotland, uh, there was a really good example of this. Um, I'd been out all night drinking, and I waited in line for like three hours to get into this one place. Finally, I get up to the front of the queue. The bouncers look me straight in the eye, and they say, Sir, you're not drunk enough to get into ambulance. Uh, um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, you can tell I am a party animal. Woo! Um, but yeah, uh, so I, I do enjoy drinking. Um, another place that I've been before, it was a really beautiful place. And again, one of those places that you have to be drunk enough to get into. Um, I waited in line. I finally got up to the front. I talked to the guy at the front, and he said, Sir, how many had to drink tonight? I said, Seven. He said, Sir, you have to have at least eight to get into Fibonacci's. It's right off Prime Square. <laughs> Awesome. Somebody who gets math jokes. Yes. <laughs> now, I am a heady comedian, as has been said previously. Um, that's not a joke. That's actually more of a statement. Um, because um, before I get too far, I do want to let people know I'm bisexual. That does not mean I'm easy. That just means I'm doubly as picky. Um, <laughs> thank you. You to the awkward laugher here at the front. Um, <laughs> Now, the, the, being bisexual has led to some really awkward things in my life. Um, when I was in college, I ended up meeting a lot of bros. Um, cheer here if anybody knows the type I'm talking about. Bros. Now, the big thing about bros is, one, you have to be able to, to dissect what they say. And one of the biggest things I've learned is translating. If you ever see a bro on a bros night out, He's probably saying stuff like this. Oh, man, I got so wasted. I had about four beers. Um, the next thing you have to understand is that when they start talking about getting girls at the bar, they're probably not actually telling the truth. It goes probably something like this. Oh, man, I smell... I, oh, man, there was four chicks that I was macking on. Oh, man, it was awesome. I spoke to four girls, all of whom smacked me. And oh man, like I, oh man, finally found this one chick. She couldn't say no. She was too drunk to say anything. And oh man, oh man, we, we were talking all night. And oh man, she was sick. She vomited on my shoes. And oh man, we went back to her place. I spiked her drink and she didn't know it. And oh man, 
Yes, we started having sex on the couch. We started having sex in the bedroom. We had sex here, there, and elsewhere in the bed uh, in the house. We had it even in the kitchen. It's a one bedroom flat. And then, oh man, and finally, oh man, it is going so well. Oh man, it's going so well with her. After that, we decided that we're gonna do it all again next week. And that usually entails, oh man, that's awesome. The condom broke, and I really have to wait and see if she's not pregnant. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, that's a gross night out for you, hello, this is awkward, how's it going? Interrupting my set, thank you. <laughs> Not that it was going that well anyway, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, now, I, being bisexual, dealing with my parents and everything, my parents have been relatively open about it when I was talking to them. Um, the first thing out of my mom's mouth wasn't, hun, Anything you do we're okay with wasn't, well, we're awkward about the sex chat. My parents' first thing that they said was, Scott, we don't really care who you have sex with or what you have sex with, so long as you double bag it. <laughs> um, but last but not least, um, have, having been an awkwardly sexual person and a geek, um, I decided that when I moved off to university, my parents wanted to buy me all the best stuff to go to school with, so I got to decide what I wanted to take to school with me, and I decided I wanted all the best everything, so I got the entire Spider-Man set. I got the Spider-Man bowl, the Spider-Man forks and spoons, I got the Spider-Man pajamas, and I got the Spider-Man blanket that covered everything, including my virginity, till I was 21. <laughs> who fucking who? And, but, but I do have to say, ladies and gentlemen, it is always awesome getting in up in front of a large group of people like this because, God, it makes me feel like I am actually doing something with my life. Um, but before I go, I do want to say please keep supporting live comedy. Also, please tip your bartender because, well, I don't drink anymore, so you have to make up for my bad. And last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, just remember, suicide is not a joke, it is a punchline. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're gonna keep this show moving right along. Let's look, we got for you Mr. James Rodata. Thank you. Woo! All right. Hello, McCormick's. I'm glad to be here because I've just, uh, it's January 25th, and that means I've just about gotten over being disappointed about Christmas because I didn't get the jetpack I've been asking for for the past 11 years. I grew up in the 1980s. We were supposed to have those in the year 2000. <laughs> Flying cars, jetpacks, and space travel. That was all supposed to happen. But the only thing that we all looked forward to in the 1980s that actually happened by the time the 21st century rolled around were the Star Wars prequels. Ow! And we all know how that went, don't we? <laughs> now, I know there are a lot of people out there, well, maybe not that many, who like to tell you that, well, you know, if you watch Revenge of the Sith, like, in isolation, and you look at it, it's really a good movie. No, no, not at all. It's the worst one of the lot, and here's why. Now, I understand you're young, you bend the Jedi code a little bit, you get your girlfriend pregnant. You're young, you're gonna make mistakes, it happens. And yes, you might, oh, come on in. Yeah, so anyways, you might later on be put into the charismatic sway of a wise older guy who at first is just trying to show you new and innovative ways to use the force. It can happen, you're impressionable, you're having visions about your new wife dying in childbirth, you're under a lot of stress. But here's the thing, when you walk into the Jedi Temple and you start killing children left and right, I'm sorry, but at the end of Jedi, you do not get to come back and wave and smile with Yoda and Kenobi. That is so not cool. I mean, Yoda and Kenobi knew that that went down. They're sitting there, and then all of a sudden, um, Hayden Anakin shows up, and they're like, Awkward this is. I killed children you did. Anakin, the truth is all dependent on our own point of view, but they were like, Ape Man, what were you thinking? So that's why I don't like Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> what I like even less than that is when a relative of mine dies because I have to go to their funeral, and my family's really big on open casket funerals, and I hate going to those because they say the stupidest things at them, like, oh, look at Uncle Ed. He looks so peaceful, just like he's sleeping. No, he doesn't. For one thing, Nobody goes to sleep in a suit. That never happens. Don't get me 
me wrong. I passed out drunk in a suit many times. No one called that peaceful. If you want to make my funeral look accurate, tie the tie around my head, untuck half my shirt, and put a half-empty bottle of cheap vodka in my hand. Oh, there's James. Just like we always remembered him. They got the lipstick right. It looks just like the skinny girls that he used to make out with in college. But uh, the real reason I don't like uh, open casket funerals is that I'm a big fan of zombie movies. And when people ask me, do you want to go up for the viewing, I say, no, I don't. Because the only corpses I've seen on TV and the movies are walking around trying to eat people. So unless you've got a shotgun and a baseball bat, I'm going to stay back here. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a mall to go barricade. <laughs> well, McCormick's, you guys have been a lot of fun. Keep it going for the rest of the conference to see tonight. Thanks a lot. Thank you, McCormick's. Good luck to James Rodatis. We want to keep this show moving right along, but before we do, uh, where is Tony Fleece? T-Bone, Tony, please direct your attention to that man in the back. It is his birthday tonight, so I couldn't let the night go by without wishing Tony a birthday. Unfortunately, he has to rush out of here to go to work. But Tony, happy birthday, man. I'm glad you can make it for a better part of the show. Have a great night at work. Sorry. So next, coming to the stage, we have a very funny man. He's a multiple clash of the comics win winner. Hilarious, hilarious guy. Please give it up for my man, Mr. Bounce. Adam! What's up, McCormick? Ow! None of my doctors have figured out what the hell is wrong with me. I told my doctor, for someone who went to medical school for 10 years, you ask a lot of stupid ass questions. <laughs> But Mr. Adams, when was the last time you engaged in sexual activity? If the short bus is rocking, I'm having a fucking seizure. <laughs> I had to get psychologically evaluated a few years back. My therapist asked me, what do the voices in your head tell you to do? Laundry? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes those voices give really good advice, like, take your medication. <laughs> Side effects may include headache, nausea, and exposing myself to hookers on Jeff Davis Highway. <laughs> well, look at my naked ass will encourage you to get your shit together. <laughs> On that note, I used to work with kids. <laughs> Whenever the kids would ask me questions, I had to play it safe and lie my ass off. <laughs> like, where do babies come from? Target. <laughs> what are you gonna be for Halloween? Normal. <laughs> What's masturbation? It's when you're late for work. <laughs> I'm late for work at least twice a day <laughs> at Target. <laughs> Another thing I learned from working with kids, that in certain situations, women clearly had the advantage. Uh, for example, ladies, when you're out in public, you can walk up to someone else's kid and say, he's so cute, I can just take him home. And nobody thinks anything of it. <laughs> but if I say it, there's a fucking Amber Alert. <laughs> I don't have any motherfucking candy. <laughs> don't get the short bus confused with a fucking white van. <laughs> For me, sex is like vacation for two reasons. I don't get it very often, and after a all I can say is, damn, I spent too much money. <laughs> <laughs> I developed a criteria for what I look for in a woman. Blonde hair, blue eyes, vagina optional. 
<laughs> then I realized I should not be that goddamn picky. <laughs> So if you are over 21, have a pulse, and two minutes to spare, you are eligible for good deck on the short bus. <laughs> we can wear matching helmets. <laughs> I recommend doggy style so you won't have to look at me. <laughs> Shit, all you have to look at is the back of my head. <laughs> it took y'all motherfuckers long enough to get that damn belt. <laughs> Damn, I thought I was slow. That's my time. I was out fast.